Welcome back to MH Studios. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I made these cherry cutting boards with resin infused details. So here is the cherry lumber that I'm going to cut up into sections so I can make end grain. This is the end grain here. So I will cut sections of two inches, but actually two and a quarter, so I plane it down. So I'm going to mark two and a quarter, and then a little bit for the kerf, and then two and a quarter, and a little bit for the kerf, and then two and a quarter, and I'll do that all the way down this board. And I'll Take it to my chop saw with a 24 tooth blade so it cuts this lumber. This thing is about three and three quarters thick this way and about nine and a half this way. And it was 12 feet long and I've cut this one down. So right now this is about three feet. So what I'll probably do with a chop saw is cut on this mark and then put a stop down at this end on the, ch on the uh, chop saw. And then so I'll just keep sliding this down. Thing is, it's very heavy on that end and I'm gonna have to figure out a way to keep it from tipping down there and hold it steady here. I used to have a clamp that held it down, but I can't find that, so. Anyway, this is approximately where I'm gonna be cutting this and this board is this piece of lumber actually it's solid cherry and it is very um, square and if you look at it this way it's just raw lumber but it is square this end isn't really it's actually pretty good so that is the beginning of the uh, next cherry block that I'm going to work on Look at this piece. It's quite heavy, but it has this bug area in it, which I will be digging out. It, they, they've long vacated this piece of cherry, and it really shocked me that there was um, such a bad infestation on this piece of cherry because cherry is so hard. I bet this thing weighs, I don't know, 45, 50 pounds. It's very heavy. So, you know, I'm surprised about that. But if I take this and turn it, I mean, imagine this. It's going to be a slice here, and then it's going to be turned on its side. So I could point them in. I'll make that decision when I get to it once everything is cut. So after I did the calculations with these boards flipped on their sides at three and a half inches, I'm going to end up with two pretty substantial, very heavy boards. And uh, I'll be showing you that process, so just hang tight. So I cut the board in half because it was way too heavy to manage and work with. Normally three feet isn't that long, but the weight of this thing was completely difficult to wrangle. So here I'm cutting it in half and I'm gonna move on to cutting the sections next. Now, as I cut this up, I was wondering if there was areas that were soft. So I was wondering if when these holes were made in this wood by the bugs, somehow water might have gotten in there and softened up the surrounding areas to these bug holes. So I had to uh, take care of that once I got things flipped over, which I'm about to do next. So this is the entire board all lined up and cut in the pattern that the log existed originally. Now I'm flipping them. This is how they're gonna show facing up. So the end grain, or the, it's perfect for cutting boards, is what will be facing up. And you can see how the patterns aren't necessarily joined, but I'm gonna fix that. 
I'm also collecting some of the cherry chips and sawdust that I had created because I am going to be filling these holes, which you'll see in a minute, with this particular cherry. So it will have the same color. It'll be a little darker, but it's pretty close to the same color as the end grain. So since I have these holes, and the idea here is to join them somehow. So let's just take these two, for example, and you can see how this is all eaten out by a bug. I go like that, and about the same height. I could possibly fill the holes with this. I'd have to make them match, because if I, I mean, they're book matched this way, but that's not gonna work. So I have to think about, I don't think that's gonna work. These all have to be planed and made level. I, I, a joiner would be the best bet. I got a friend who's got a joiner, maybe he'll help me with this project. But um, I'm thinking more like this. And if I did do it this way, I'd carve out some of this and some of this so it kind of looks like it, it's going to mirror itself. And then the next one would be flat side, flat side, but up against each other. And then this shape over here, and I'd make it you know, perfectly so it looks like a round. And then the same thing at the end, flat and flat. So that's basically the idea. And it's a lot of work to do that. But this is how it all came apart. Now I'm taking those irregular edges and planing them flat. I have a Ryobi battery powered planer over here, which by the way, this stuff is hard so it sucks up the battery and I had to wait and recharge a number of times. But you can see I'm using that attachment to make sure that it is square when I plane it because that's important. You don't want huge gaps in between your cuts. And this area right here, that flat area I just planed down, that is what is going to be butt up against the other pieces. So they have to be absolutely flat. As you can see, they're joining pretty nicely right there. And I'll either be taking a chisel to carve those out so they're more balanced with each other and or uh, some kind of a drill system, maybe even just the um, router to carve out some of that area. And I thought about using the sander to sand some of this off, but I didn't want to make it a regular, so it, it's a tough choice what tool you use to make this stuff work. But, you know, you just keep trying different things, and that's how I approach it. And now I'm continuing to uh, remove and flatten and square up all these pieces so they sit together very nicely. So you might be asking yourself, asking me, why in the heck are you going to all this trouble with this crappy piece of wood? Well, first of all, I don't like to waste things, and it is cherry, so it has all of this character in it, and I think just general beauty that I didn't want to waste or throw out or burn. Now I know a lot of people burn cherry in their fireplaces, but I just, this was, I don't know, I just didn't want to throw it out. So I went to a lot of trouble to make this piece of wood work as a cutting board, which you saw in the beginning of the video how they turned out. I think they turned out pretty nice myself, so I feel pretty comfortable with it and don't mind doing the process to get there. And you can see how this is nice and square now. So 
So now you can see I'm ready to glue this up and I flip them back over on their the original um, surface and I start to glue these all up. And this is a waterproof glue and it's it's one of um, Type Bond's best glues. So it is a good, good uh, glue for making cutting boards because you can be assured that the um, boards won't split apart on you. And uh, obviously making them flat's relevant but also making them square. So once I have the glue all spread out evenly on the um, parts, and I glue both sides, I throw them up on those clamps. You can see they're pipe clamps that I bought and assembled, and they're long, so I can do a number of different things. I originally bought them because I was building some furniture. If you're interested in seeing some of the furniture I did, just go to mhstudios.com. It's my website, and click on Furniture at the top part of the uh, website, and you can see the furniture I've made. Now, when you squeeze these clamps together, they can sometimes pop out of position. You don't want to do that, so I'm basically trying to flatten everything so it's all, you know, flat. You don't want to have one board higher than the other, and that just adds to your, well, first of all, you mill away too much wood, and secondly, it just can add to your problematic uh, planing issues, and this stuff is hard as can be, so it doesn't matter what planer I'm using, whether I'm using the stationary 13-inch DeWalt planer or I'm using a hand planer, it's taxing on the machine, and um, it, it, when I used the DeWalt planer, the stationary one, it actually took so much of a draw out of it, it popped the circuit, the breaker, so you're better off starting off good in the first place and getting it flat, and I've had this experience in the past, so that's what I was doing here, flattening everything and making sure I wasn't going to have those issues. So that board there I attached to the underside, which of the clamps which pulled everything down into perfect place and I did whatever I needed to do to make these things flat and there are the two boards that I ended up making and I used as many clamps as needed to make sure that they were flat and after planing sanding filling etc I put caulk pools around the deepest holes and then filled them with this blue resin Making resin pours are relatively simple. I have tons of videos on how I do pours. You can find a playlist or just hunt around for videos on resin pouring if you like. So the photograph's not so great, but you get an idea and the resin does pop a little bit more than this photograph shows, but that's the first one. This is the second one that I made and I did fill it with different materials to add contrast and depth. In addition to making the cherry end grain cutting boards, I made this maple end grain cutting board. I made several of them, and these are pictures of those. The process can be very tedious and long and drawn out. Multiple cutting, multiple sandings, multiple planing. If you have any questions about them, you can ask me in the comments below. But I'm also going to put links at the end to other videos I've done showing how I make cutting boards. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell button for notifications and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.